I was about 19, a scrawny teenager with more curiosity than sense. It was more than two decades ago, but the memory of that day is still etched in my mind like it happened yesterday. See, back then, I thought I was invincible, that the world was my playground, and adventure awaited me at every turn. Little did I know, the ocean had its own ideas. It was a bright, sunny day when my buddies and I decided to go snorkeling in a reef. The water was crystal clear, the kind of clarity that made you believe you could see all the way to the ocean floor. The vibrant colors of the coral and the myriad of fish darting around were like something out of a documentary. We were having the time of our lives, exploring the underwater world, until I stumbled upon something that would change the course of that day and haunt my memories for years to come. My eyes caught a glimpse of a dark opening in the reef, a cave entrance hidden beneath the coral formations. Call it teenage recklessness or sheer curiosity, but I decided to dive in. The entrance seemed innocent enough, a passage into the unknown that begged to be explored. I figured it would be a quick in and out adventure, in addition to my growing list of bragworthy escapades. The cave, however, had other plans for me. It started off as a casual exploration, swimming deeper into the darkness. The underwater world inside the cave was eerily beautiful, with shafts of sunlight piercing through gaps in the rocks, creating an ethereal glow. It felt like I was in a secret underwater sanctuary. I lost track of time and direction. The cave twisted and turned in ways that disoriented me. Panic began to set in when I realized I was alone surrounded by nothing but the cold embrace of the underwater cave. My oxygen supply dwindled. The once clear and inviting water now felt like a suffocating prison. I could feel the anxiety building up inside me, the weight of my predicament sinking in. It was a battle against time, and I was losing. I ventured further, the tunnel twisted and turned, and before I knew it, I found myself trapped, wedged between unforgiving rocks. Panic set in, and I fought the rising tide of fear. I could feel the precious seconds ticking away as my oxygen supply dwindled. Then, in a stroke of luck or perhaps sheer survival instinct, I spotted a small opening in the cave ceiling. It was a lifeline, a glimmer of hope that fueled my determination. I pushed myself towards it, the walls scraping against my equipment. The oxygen tank, my only source of life in this underwater prison, snagged on the jagged rocks. With my heart pounding, I wrestled with the tank, fearing that any sudden movement could spell disaster. The cold water seemed to mock my struggle, indifferent to the silent battle being waged in its depths. And then, with a final, desperate tug, I managed to free the tank. But the victory was short-lived. I swam to the surface as fast as my tired limbs could carry me. My vision blurred, and a gray haze enveloped the edges. I felt a strange sensation, like the world was tilting on its axis. I fought to keep consciousness, the fear of what could have been still gripping me. Freed from the clutches of the cave, I swam towards the surface, the urgency of my situation forcing my tired limbs to move faster than ever. The gray blur at the edges of my vision intensified, a silent reminder of the close call I had just experienced. The world felt unsteady, like I was caught in a current threatening to pull me under once more. Breaking through the surface, I gasped for air, the taste of salt water mixed with the sweetness of survival. The ocean, once a playground of wonders, had shown me its unforgiving side. I floated there, disoriented and shaken, contemplating the thin line between adventure and peril. So, me and my old man decided to do this coral diving trip in the Pacific. Seemed like a pretty cool idea at the time. You know, bonding and all that were out there in the boat. Sun shining, waves rocking us like a lullaby. My old man, he's pumped. He's been diving for years, said the Pacific has some of the best coral spots in the world. Me? I'm just looking forward to seeing some colorful fish and maybe snapping a pic for the Instagram. So, we suit up, gear on, and splash into the ocean. 
The water's clear as crystal, and I can see the coral below, like a whole other world down there. My old man gives me a quick rundown on the hand signals and stuff. You know, the basics. I nod, trying to act like I've got it all under control. We start diving, and it's breathtaking. Fish of all colors, corals swaying with the current. It's like being in an underwater paradise. But then, my old man signals that he's gonna explore a bit more, points to his watch like it's some secret diver code. I give him a thumbs up, thinking I'll just hang out around here and soak it all in. That's when it went south. I decide to dive a bit deeper, check out this particularly vibrant coral bed. Everything's cool until I start feeling this weird pressure in my chest. Like, it's getting harder to breathe. Panic kicks in, but I try to play it cool. Maybe it's just in my head, right? But no, it gets worse. I'm struggling to catch my breath, and I realize I'm way deeper than I thought. I try to swim up, but it's like I'm stuck in slow motion. My chest feels like it's gonna implode. And then, everything goes dark. Next thing I know, I'm opening my eyes, and it's like I'm in a different world. But it's not the vibrant coral world I was exploring. No, it's darker, and I can't make out much. Panic sets in again, and I realize I'm still underwater. My lungs burn, screaming for air. I fumble for my oxygen tank, trying to take a breath, but it feels like I'm sucking in nothing but emptiness. My mind races. I'm at the bottom of the sea, alone, and it's like my body's forgotten how to swim. I kick my legs, desperately trying to propel myself upward, but it's like I'm stuck in quicksand. The darkness starts closing in, and I'm fading, losing consciousness. I can feel the pressure building in my head, and just when I think this might be it, a blur of movement slices through the water. It's my old man. He grabs me, pulling me upward with a strength I didn't know he had. My lungs scream in protest as I breach the surface, gasping for air like a drowning man finally reaching shore. I cough and sputter, disoriented and weak. My old man's shouting something, but my ears are ringing and his voice is muffled. He hooks onto me, dragging me back to the boat. I collapse on the deck, gulping in air like it's the sweetest thing I've ever tasted. It takes me a moment to catch my breath, and when I finally look at my old man, I see the fear in his eyes. He thought he lost me down there, and I can see the relief washing over him as I start to come back to life. He tells me I went too deep, too fast. The bins, they call it. Something about nitrogen bubbles in my blood, messing with my head. I nod, pretending like I understand, but the truth is, I was inches away from becoming a permanent resident of the Pacific. We head back to shore, the boat rocking with each wave. I'm still shaken, my mind replaying the darkness, the suffocation, over and over. My old man keeps glancing at me, probably thinking about how he almost lost his kid to the ocean depths. As we dock, I sit there, staring at the water that almost swallowed me whole. The Pacific, beautiful, mysterious, and damn near deadly. It all started innocently enough. I was on this small, remote island in the South Pacific with crystal clear waters and sandy beaches. The day before the hurricane hit, I decided to go for a solo dive. The water was calm, and the sun was shining brightly in the cloudless sky. It was the perfect day to explore the vibrant coral reefs that surrounded the island. I swam further out, my excitement building with each passing minute. The vibrant marine life surrounded me, and I felt like I was in a living, breathing aquarium. Little did I know, things were about to take a terrifying turn. Out of nowhere, a shadow crossed my path. At first, I dismissed it as a figment of my imagination, a trick of the light. But then it happened again, and this time, it was more pronounced. I turned around, my heart racing, and that's when I saw it, a black and white sea snake. Now, I'm no marine biologist, but I knew enough to understand that sea snakes aren't the friendliest creatures. This one, in particular, seemed fixated on me. Its body, sleek and sinuous, moved with a fluid grace that sent shivers down my spine. 
I tried to stay calm, reminding myself that sea snakes are generally not aggressive unless provoked. I slowly backed away, hoping it would lose interest and swim away. But to my horror, it had other plans. The snake lunged at me. Instinctively, I raised my arm to shield myself. And that's when it happened. The snake wrapped itself around my arm, its cold, scaly body tightening like a vice. Panic set in as I struggled to free myself from its grip. I could feel the fear taking hold of me, the realization that I was in a life or death situation sinking in. I kicked my legs, desperately trying to swim toward the surface. The snake tightened its grip, and I could feel its scales digging into my skin. It was a battle against time, and with each passing second, the snake's hold on me seemed to grow stronger. As I ascended, the pressure in my ears intensified. My vision blurred, and I felt a wave of dizziness wash over me. As soon as I reached the shallows, the sea snake uncoiled itself from my arm and slithered away. I stumbled onto the beach, panting and disoriented. My arm throbbed with pain, and I could see the red marks left behind by the snake's coils. I watched in horror as the sea snake made its way up the beach, disappearing under a breadfruit tree. It was as if it had a destination in mind, a place to hide and wait. The encounter left me shaken, my mind racing to comprehend the bizarre events that had just unfolded. I stumbled back to our makeshift campsite, my family blissfully unaware of the ordeal I had just endured. But how could I explain the inexplicable? A sea snake attacking me out of nowhere? That night, as the wind began to pick up, the locals had warned us about the impending hurricane, but this sea snake encounter added an eerie layer of uncertainty to the approaching storm. According to them, the sea snakes on the island were known to exhibit strange behavior before big storms. They can sense it and look for things that are heading towards the shore so that they don't have to put in so much effort to get out of the sea.